Hey, how's it going? It's Grant with the Garden of Eater. And Shelby. And today we're going to talk about keeping fish and shrimp together. Uh, it's not something I recommend if you want to breed, but uh, I get this question asked all too often. And well, Shelby is wanting more and more fish tanks in the house. We have more fish in the house than we probably ever had before. Um, and... I'm definitely going to be working some shrimp into most of her fish tanks. Uh, there's going to be some pros and cons to those. Uh, we'll go over all of that. Uh, I've got a list of different fish we're going to go over. Um, a list of all the fish that we have in the house and then a couple extras. And I'm sure everybody in the stream will be asking about certain fish as well. So I think you better catch up, though. We got quite a few people that have already said hello. All right. <laughs> Uh, first was Crip Keeper. How you doing? We got Eduardo. How's it going, Ed? Frank. Hello, Frank. Hello, Matt. And Jamie Anderson. How you doing, Mason? Uh, Tim, Victor, and Gary. How's it going, guys? So, well, we got quite a few fish this weekend. Uh, Saturday was a little fish swap, and we had a little table. Well, hey, we, Eddie. We actually had two tables. Um, we sold some shrimp, some plants, a couple little odds, ends, and things. We no longer use, like, the little plastic adjusters, a bunch of old uh, sponge filters, and then also some fish. And the fish we got from GK Aquatics, he is in chat. Um, I don't really want to import or bring in any uh, fish from any wholesalers right away. Uh, there's a lot of issues with cross-contamination and, you know, having to quarantine stuff. Even though our system is really separate, um, a lot of our tanks are dedicated to shrimp. And so the fish tanks are kind of getting packed now. And Shelby has said enough for now until we get more tanks set up but she uh approved me to set up the racks and stuff in the garage so i've been putting those off for good reasons but uh i think we can manage a couple of tanks in there as well and uh i think some of the fish are going to be a little bit happier out in the garage we have a little bit of an issue keeping some of the fish inside our racks are really not set up for heaters. So a lot of the uh, fish that like the warmer water, like the rummy nose tetras, uh, we really didn't have a lot of options to set up a, t a heater for those. So there's only like really one tank and sadly they're behind me on the couch, but uh, we do have some fish up above. Uh, all of Gary's fish sold really well, except for the dwarf neon tetras or rainbows, rainbows. dwarf neon rainbows, I'm sorry. And, and those are all up here. Uh, they're, they're all in the brightest part of the light, so it's really hard to see them. But uh, those, those are the newest additions to the house, along with several others. Uh, do you want to catch up on chat real quick? Yep. All right. Hello, Jake and Jeff, Chad, Scotty the Fish Freak, Richard, and I think there's one more. Yep, DJ Owen. So, uh, you want to go over the other the other fish you got from Gary? Because Gary Gar <laughs> Gary gave us several fish to sell, and I said I'm not going to sell these. We're going to keep these. So, you want to go over those? Uh, uh, you said you didn't need the list. When I was like, "Hey, do you want to make a list <laughs> of all the fish that we got?" And she's like, "I don't need a list. I know my fish." So let's go. Let's go. <laughs> what are the fish you got from just Gary? I don't need the list. I I'll know right now. Let's go. So I got firemouth cichlids. Oh no! See, that's what I firemouth killifish. So I'm so sorry. But what was their scientific name? Mm, that's, that's what, what we have Chad with. for. <laughs> that is true. Um, it is. I just posted. I can't do she, Latin she, names. Epiphyses. No, just let's move on. She Epiphyses. got that part right. What What else did we keep? We we kept we kept something for Layla. No, now I want to know. <laughs> Oh, we have rice fish for Layla. Oh, there's, there's the Getty. I got it. <laughs> okay, so, I got the first part. So I was making a joke, Chad, when you left. Uh, I was like, hey, uh, was, we were talking to someone, and they were talking about how knowledgeable you are. And I'm like, yeah, when he moves, I'm going to have to have him on speed dial. 
but set to a FaceTime so that way I can be like, hey, man, what's this? Because uh, I won't be able to save all of my uh, questions for you when we get to the show. Not that it's that many questions, but like now, now that we're getting into fish, it's it's going to be a lot more questions for you, man. And, and you're moving. So it's really sad. So we, we got some other people we got to say hi to in chat. Oh, I did. I did miss. Hello, Tater. And Alan Tooth, how you doing? Just sent out your shrimp today. You got to say Tater Sandwich. Oh, Tater Sandwich. It's not, it's not Tater Tot. It's not Tater Salad. <laughs> tater Sandwich. That's a new one. Uh, hello, Leo. So so what else? What did we get for Layla? The rice fish. The oh, daisy did, rice uh, fish. We already said that. My bad. Mm -hmm. I thought we jumped back into it. And then what else did we get from, from Gary? See, this one was from me. Uh, but tequila. Like, tequila. What are they, though? They're tequila. <laughs> they're Gideons. So they're a live bear. They're a Cuban live bear. Not a Cuban live bear. They're a Mexican live bear. So they are... Uh, wow. Incredibly offensive. <laughs> they're, they're really beautiful in the tanks, though. So, um, anything else from Gary or what else did we get from the show? What did we, what all did we get from the show? So from the show, we got the Rummy Nose Tetras. Um, what did Jaden get from the show? Flower horn who does not look like a flower horn to it, me. It looks like a flower <laughs> horn. It's just young and it's got a lot of time to grow. Um, I corrected myself, Chad, before... Before you got me. <laughs> and um, I don't, I I don't got, know. I got three things for the pool. Sword tails. So some red sword tails. And then um, I Did believe that's Did you put more it. black mollies? No, we didn't get any more black mollies. There was some black mollies there. Uh, we decided not to get them, however. But um, going over the fish... Big reason why we got the Achilles fish from Gary was uh, they're kind of a top feeder. So uh, it wasn't a show, Scotty. It was our local club swap meet. We uh, we are part of the Pasco Aquarium Club as well as the Tampa Bay Aquarium Society. They meet the second Saturday and the third Saturday of every month. And this month just happened to be their swap meet. Very, very small, maybe 40 people. Um, not, not quite as big as Pasco, but, uh, still great people there. Great cr crowd. And, uh, we haven't been there for a while, so it was great to see everybody. So, um, but back to the Achilles. Uh, so we, uh, got those. They are not just like cool to look at and stuff like that, but they're, they're relatively small for Achilles fish and they're, they're more of like a top hunter. Uh, Chad told us to throw some, uh flies fruit in there flies. some fruit flies and she did that today and uh how did that go <laughs> some might be in the house i'm just kidding uh they went really well they actually enjoyed it they love hunting on top so so we're, i'm probably I'm just gonna do now. do some like red neos yellow or blue uh with them in their tank just to see how they go um but snacks yeah, that, that's going to be the thing is uh, they're, they're going to be, you know, the babies are going to be snacks. And then the, the con to keeping the shrimp in the tanks is they can eat some of the eggs. So we're going to have to keep an eye on the mops. We got some mops at the, the swap meet, so we didn't have to make any. We've been so busy, haven't made any of the mops. So we got mops now, and uh, we'll keep an eye out and get the mops. We have plenty of open tanks, so when we see eggs, we'll move them over into a tank that doesn't have shrimp, of course. So. And catching back up on chat. Hello, Esketi. And Misfit Reptiles and Aquatics. And Yellowstone Aquatics. How are you guys doing? How's it going? And then the, the rice fish, those are great. They're, they can be a little bit aggressive. However, uh, we are going to try and keep those outside as well. And then in all of our tubs outside, we do have you know some, some random neo culls here and there. Um, but we are going to try and do more of just one color, even if they're uh, not as high grade or anything like that. I, I really just want to do as much uh, 
keeping as much biodiversity in one pond as possible. So we're going to keep the, the shrimp in the ponds. But at the same time, uh, we, we're going to be pulling mops and stuff like that. And we'll have tubs to hatch out fry that won't have any any uh, shrimp in them at all. So we'll have breeding tubs and stuff like that where we'll keep the shrimp in there to help eat the unwanted, uneaten food and stuff like that. So uh, the daisy fish are another good option. Uh, not the greatest if you're trying to breed the, the shrimp, though. And then... Uh, I think they did really well in that tank, actually. The, the tequilas would probably be all right with some neos also, but... Uh, I was told not to throw those outside because they're up in the mountains of Mexico. They actually get kind of cooler temperature water wise. Uh, so we're probably going to keep those inside and I can't just like dedicate a tank just to a live barrier. So I'm probably going to throw some type of shrimp in there with them. But I, I feel like that's going to be for sure cull shrimp in there because I feel like the, the higher grade ones aren't going to stand very long with the, the aggressive females and males in the tanks. And then uh, he gave us some um, bushy nose plecos as well. Uh, those sold right away. Those were pretty good, really nice color wise, also. And uh, I've kept bushy nose plecos. We bred bushy nose at one time. We had some long fin albinos and uh, a bunch of quarry cats and guppies and shrimp all in one tank. And like Christmas one year, we had a ton of eggs. And the eggs hatched, and uh, I don't know, we had like 100 baby plecos that we ended up raising up. So it was uh, quite the endeavor, but uh, after we bred them like three times, I just wanted the space for just shrimp, and, and we kind of tore down the tanks, got rid of the fish. Um, but I did notice that I was able to move the bushy nose plecos, one of them, into like each one of my shrimp tanks, and it was able to help grow them out a lot quicker. But I noticed when they're like two months or not two months old, but like two inches in size, when they'd be on the uh, food piles, that sometimes some of the babies would end up uh, becoming bushy nose food. So uh, around two inches, I would pull them from the uh, expensive ponds or uh, tanks, especially. Okay, let's cap catch back up. We went far behind. Hey, Ray Aquatics. How you doing? How's it going, Robert? And thanks for shouting out the like button, Crip Keeper. I appreciate it. And then saw Robert Bloomfield sneak in here. And Susan from SLC Aquatics. How you guys doing? Hey, Susan, we sent your box of shrimp out today. I mm -hmm. caught them personally, so <laughs> and there might be some extras. Hello, Lonnie. Looney Tunes. And we did get a question. I was going to say. I was just saying hi to everyone first. <laughs> All right. Tater asked, I'm on the Oregon coast, not quite Florida, but winters are pretty mild. Can rice fish stay out all winter? I was told up to 50 degrees or down to 50 degrees. <clears throat> so I'm not sure how cold your water gets. I'm not sure how large your bats get if you plan on putting a heater or anything like that outside so if you can keep the water temperature above 50 degrees then you could probably do the rice fish outside that's why we're going to try and do the rice fish outside is because our waters in some of the bigger ponds did drop down to like 47 and we're going to run something this winter uh like some type of like slow drip system that i think is going to help uh, keep the waters a little bit warmer in some of the tubs. So uh, I don't know. I just put that on Shelby just the other day and she's like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Let's do it. So I don't have to get the approval from her. I just need the time. Uh, one of the things we talked about with uh, the Bloomfields, Robert Bloomfield today, um, we're kind of putting the 90 uh, tank stand on hold. It's going to hold 90 10 gallon tanks. It's going to fill the the room in and uh be the final background backdrop to our livescape this is temporary I, like this I thought bit. this was really <laughs> fitting but it would be really awkward like to have it. to watch tv like this because <laughs> our tv is in this direction so when do we watch it? <laughs> uh eventually no or, or what we can do is build the 90 tank gallon stand here and then put these tanks there 
so that that's something we could do and then we would have a, a permanent backdrop and I, I feel like there's a bunch of plants that i could add to these tanks or shelby could add to the tanks and we make them look a lot appealing and i don't know i think you can see through and see some stuff i don't know that looks like a microwave in the, oh you can see our microwave all right <laughs> that's what that is I don't know why I'm backwards. The thing's inverted. So I thought I was looking at my door. I'm like, that's a door. I don't know how you can even see the door from this angle, but that looks like a microwave. No one's the microwave. paying attention. They're watching the beautiful um, now, fish. Now Who they cares? all know the microwave's right there. Pointed <laughs> it out. It's more of a storage box. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to put put the tank stand on hold. Shelby finished up the video. Um, we got kind of a little unboxing. We got some new shrimp. Uh, some shrimp that we've already had before in the past, but we're trying again at them. Uh, they're a little bit harder on the difficulty level, so without giving out too much away, uh, that will go out tomorrow around 2, uh, not 2, 12 o'clock on uh, Eastern time. So uh, after that, we want to finish up the 100 tank stand uh, video because I got all that footage. It's all downloaded onto the computer and uh we're getting ahead of us we got way too much footage and i just need to slow down take care of what we already have and like there's not even shrimp in some of these tanks yet some of them aren't cycled yet but the ones that are i don't know where that beeping is coming from if you want to go it's like creepy too so if you want to go <laughs> figure out where that is that's fine if you want me to go that's fine you can talk about <laughs> the tank stand but it went no, away I think now that's our daughter. so um but we have that rack going up and i'm going to start catching shrimp slowly this week and filling up as many tanks as we can there's still a missing tank that hasn't been filled up there yet i want substrate for it we're thinking all akitama which is bonsai soil and there's a place down in florida where we can just drive down there load up the truck and not have to pay for shipping so uh, i got a couple other things that i want to do down that way i know chance uh, from Aqua Escape, he wants to meet there. Maybe we can get a deal for like a whole pallet of the soil. He takes half of it. He goes home. We take half of it. We go home and we do some type of like plant walk or something like that out there with him. And uh, it's always great to meet up with Chance when we can. But we definitely need the soil. The soil would go towards the new rack. Go I'm going to interrupt you. Jump back in. You can talk um, about the new rack all day. Hello, Dr. Anthony. He said, Grant, where is my box of shrimp? So, <laughs> I'll message you today or tomorrow and we'll, we'll get you sent, sent out. We had quite a busy Monday. It was uh, <clears throat> quite productive. Yeah, it jumped a lot. We're getting yeah. far behind. Yeah. You, Why are you, you need to stop talking so much and we I'm need to sorry. start catching up to this. <laughs> Hey, Jay Oliver. How's it going, man? I hope I don't skip anyone. Hi, big dog. How's it going, man? Nice to see you again today. Saw you earlier. It's always nice to see everybody throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And sorry if I don't respond to people. I know sometimes like I'm chatting and stuff like that. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm filling up a tank and I have to go run and make sure it doesn't flood up. I got this tank up to the very brim today. I had to drain it down a little bit. But no plant for Shelby, no flood. We're good to go. Well, All it's right. safe another week. Hello, Nick. He said, I bought some shrimp at the swap meet this weekend. Is there any specific food I should feed them or just let them graze? Thanks. So I would wait a week before feeding your shrimp uh, unless you have like something else in the tank that's already eating on food like other shrimp snails or uh bottom feeders or something like that if there's nothing in the tank then the the shrimp should be fine for up to a week without any food they should be grazing on biofilm i am assuming that your tank was set up and running beforehand if not yeah we need to jump on getting these sh these shrimp fed so uh we have a video on shrimp foods we do a nice mix of different shrimp envy foods you can check them out at shrimpenvy.com and we do some snowflakes, some bee pollen. Uh, we just recently mixed those in. Uh, some barley pellets, then some different shrimp foods as well are mixed in. And uh, just a rotation. We like to give them a nice variety. You don't want to eat chicken nuggets every day. Don't feed your shrimp the same thing every day. So we like to give them 
chicken one day, steak the next day. So they get a nice, nice mix match. Uh, Matt said, don't forget, guys, Shelby wants a paycheck for her hard oh. work to become a member so she can pay. No, 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 I was going to save it. You're going to save oh, it? Oh, yeah, I, I guess we could do it for everyone yes. who's already Ex became a member. Exactly oh, what I was going to say. The comments, so. Hold on. so I spent some time today, finally. Sorry for all the members who didn't get this, so we're going to play it for you now. <laughs> that's, that's why I said it was a productive day. Shelby did a lot today. Yay! <laughs> so thank you everyone who has joined the membership so far. Also, if you are a member and you're looking for shrimp, uh, reach out to us. I can get you a coupon code um, that'll take uh, an extra percentage off the website because that was something that we wanted to have figured out and implemented into the different um, tiers uh, of memberships. So uh if you're a member you're looking to buy shrimp just email me at grantyeater at gmail.com and jamie said tv that's a space for more tanks no <laughs> so it's actually going to be mounted above our fireplace so but we are blocking the fireplace with tanks with my leopard gecko tanks to be exact i want them in the living room so that everyone that comes over can kind of you know come over and you know see them all the time so they get really friendly they are really friendly but to me and grant so i'm just hoping they even get friendlier and everyone loves leopard geckos and, and it's really like not a spot where i could put a rack the the bricks from the the fireplace come out from the bottom kind of like for you to stack wood and stuff like that so i can build like a small stand on that but nothing that i'd be worried about uh falling or tipping over so something very small and flat uh, that Shelby can put a couple leopard gecko tanks on. And then um, Dane, uh, he had his internet router on the back of his leopard gecko tank. And then I called him out on it and he pulled out the temp gun. And sure enough, it was 80 degrees on the back of his leopard gecko tank. So I might just put the internet router between her two leopard gecko tanks and... Uh, yeah, I mean, we might not get very good internet service on the other side of the tanks, but, but we're plugged in for the streams. So, so we got called out again. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. He said he didn't give him a wrench. He talked about it last couple of streams. She tried. So I did I did show him that I'm not crazy. She's... It's not working for some Like everyone, I have three or four mods already. And when I type in, it doesn't matter if I use your URL doesn't matter if I type in your name exactly to the T. It will not let me. It says no user found. I don't know what's going on. My idea for that is if you have a channel and you've added Matt as one of your mods, please copy and paste it and send that exactly what you did to Shelby so she can copy <laughs> and paste it and put it in because I, I saw it with my own eyes. And I'm the type of person where I try to do this coupon code all day and it gave me super frustration i couldn't figure it out and uh gave up on it shut the computer down walked away from it i was like i'll, I'll let shelby get this done and uh yep sure enough shelby got it done in like five seconds she's like i don't understand why you had an issue and i was like it's just the save button just i clicked it smashed it He's nothing not worked there was no like red <laughs> error saying you need to fill this out i filled out everything I even made a like a BS code and that was just a bunch of wasted time. Yeah. I, Nothing would save. <laughs> You're just not good with computers. That's why I do all the computer stuff. Not anymore. Used to be. And then I quit. I gave up on technology and then technology gave up on me. <laughs> That's what happened. So big dog ass, 5.1 or 5.3 pH, ADA soil is bad for shrimp tiger or Boa blue bolt. Uh, that it might be a little bit low for the the tiger shrimp. I would keep my tiger shrimp at about six to uh, six point five. You could even keep them all the way up to seven point five. Uh, five point five would be about the lowest I would go with any of my tiger shrimp. I surely wouldn't risk any of my really nice tiger shrimp in pH that low. So. 
Uh, it'd be great though for blue uh, blue bolts or boas. Any Tai Tai bees or, or Taiwan bees, it's going to be really good. The lower the pH, almost the better you can be. Not below five. Dr. Anthony said that was a joke, Grant. No, no, no. I, I, I didn't know if you were in Peru right now or in California. So when I said something on the last stream, I, I was like, message me when you get back from Peru. I thought you were leaving there. I, I don't know. I get my streams mixed up and maybe you were on the way there getting ready to go there. I'm not sure. Caught up a little. Hello, Rico. How's it going, Rico Stan? I can't, hopefully one day I get to meet your pugs. <laughs> yeah. I'm obsessed with them. <laughs> I do not want Shelby to get a pug. Those things are the most annoying little excuse of a dog I've ever seen. And they're the dumbest dog. Like, best I dog basically in the had world. a pug. One of my best friends had a pug. No. Lived down the road. I was there basically every single day. The dog goes outside for three minutes, comes inside, stinks up a storm. <laughs> It's just not the smartest dog in the first place. It, it can't catch a frisbee. It can't ah, just. They're the I, best I can take, cuddlers. I can take that little they tiny are dog. so perfect. I can they... take the little tiny dog at the slip of the barn all day over a pug. Oh that little gosh. hypergenic Boston little, little bean of a thing. Yellow Aquatic said, so I've been having a few random deaths that I believe are being killed after they molt. I have not seen that, but there always seems to be molts when I find a dead one. So, there's two things that can be happening. Um, one is you're not feeding your shrimp enough, and what's going on is the uh, shrimp are hungry, and when one of the shrimp molts, they become really weak, and they go after the... Uh, the weakest link basically and that's the ones and they're they're super squishy that was the word i was looking for as i'm losing my voice i need a drink but uh what what's the other I'm reason sorry i wasn't listening oh man i don't know what you said i was reading and i usually tune you out I, you know it's a it's a it's, you do the so, same so for, <laughs> first reason is not enough uh food the the pick it off the second one is i i kind of need to know are, are they dying like with water changes? Are you not doing enough water changes? Because uh, a lot of the times if there's too thick of a shell and then they molt, they can absorb a lot of oxygen that way. Um, but if there's not a lot of oxygen in the water, they'll, they'll have issues because they're, they're trying to regrow that, that shell as fast as possible. So uh, make sure that the air storms kicked on. Uh, it might be an oxygen issue. And also, is it a big female? that's dying is it one that could be buried up because males um especially after a female uh sheds i'm so sorry i have really bad allergies tonight. that's that's why I'm so sorry. that's why i asked but, if, if if they're doing a water change or not because if they did a water change they molted and then you know yeah. they were a big female or something like that it's because that's when the males go crazy maybe too many too many males in the tank cause them to go uh after one female and overstress her out. So Cupkeeper said his uh, limited cell signal. Hope, hope he can stick in here as long as he can. No worries, man. Dr. Anthony said my shrimp love green, I'm assuming beans. Yeah. <laughs> beans. Sorry. So the, the French cut green beans are a great one. We're going to be feeding those to a lot of our Neo shrimp, especially. I don't really like to feed those too much to the Caradina. They're a little messy for the, the aqua soil, but the, the plecos, the quarry cats, will be feeding those off. And your wild type shrimp are awesome. Hello, screaming fly. I didn't see a sneak in here. Must have been a fly on the wall. So we got many types of wild shrimps. Are you referring to the neos or some of our bee type shrimps? Because we, we, we try to keep them all. Matt said it was the best two seconds ever. We didn't want to make it too long because, it, you know, it might be too Look much. how far behind in chat we already are. If you get three <laughs> people that, that throw in memberships, we're, we're done. People are leaving. <laughs> the questions are never getting answered. So Screaming Fly said, some of my inlers live with shrimp just fine. Other inlers eat them. 
Boom. All right, so we can cross <laughs> Endlers off the list and talk about those now. I was hoping people in the chat would bring up some fish that they wanted to, to learn about. If not, you know, we'll we'll go on about them as we, we discuss them. We went over quite a few shrimp that we already got this weekend. We'll start with those next. But uh, you manage chat, and I'll, I'll, I'll go around. So okay. uh, with the Endlers, uh, especially the males, they're, they're super tiny. But with anything with keeping shrimp, and fish together the main thing with the fish if it can fit in a fish's mouth it will be food and that that's not just you know the the shrimp that's other fish as well uh most of these fish are, are quite predatory um on the list the only ones that aren't are going to be the auto catfish catfish um those things are almost all herbivores and don't eat any meat so um everything else is going to eat you know whatever they can basically and uh anything small and scrumptious like a shrimp is going to be on the top of their list to go after so uh the endlers the males those are great the females however those some of those can get up to the guppy size quite large and you know when they're they're hungry they're going to hunt down shrimp and uh they can take out quite a few shrimp your allergies are I'm just sorry. killing you today. <laughs> I don't know. I it's like I'm allergic to Mondays or something. It this wasn't like this bad. It's just got to be the time of the year. I know. It was in the pool today. I don't know. I used to be really bad as a kid. No. And now I barely ever get allergies. Yeah, you just gave them all to me. <laughs> but I gave them all to Jaden. That poor kid. He goes through He uh, just got tissues. up to go to the bathroom to get tissues. Yeah. <laughs> poor kid. So uh the the endlers are great i would take out your large females and stuff like that but you know you want to make sure you stay on top of feeding them uh they're they're a good one because you don't necessarily need a heater they do all right in our room temperature in our house and that's about 70 72 in all all of our tanks so um that that's been what are you looking at they're eating my plants <laughs> i don't think they're eating your plants yes they did he just took a chunk off I think that that's not part of that's not healthy plant though. Yeah, it's not healthy, that's for sure. So, uh, the the endlers are a good one. Just the smaller, the better. You can maybe call out the big ones, sell those at your club swap meetings, or trade them for a different type of fish or something like that. But uh, Dane had many many endler tanks with shrimp in them as well. Oh, I just lost. I lost it. Where'd I go? All right. Well. Sorry. The next one that we have, uh, we already have guppies. We got some guppies from Dane. Um, but just like the endlers, nope. uh, the size is going to matter. And uh, you can cut me off for a new membership. That's that's <laughs> fine. Whenever we get a donation Yay. or a new membership. Uh, <laughs> uh, you just hit it. I think you. <laughs> so thank you, Jeffrey Brown. Welcome to the team, man. We appreciate it. Everybody who has joined us already, you guys are all contributing to the madness. More tanks. Uh, we, Even though I'm not setting up the tank for 90 10-gallon tanks, we're still going to every Petco we can and buying all the 10-gallon tank, tanks we can. So we will be ready uh, for the 90-gallon tank stand when – when the time comes whether we have room in the house or not <laughs> we have the room time is the issue chris so. said thank you for the member video and uh i appreciate that um i want to do something for you guys because it's you know you're here to get entertained and learn about something so and, and she may or may not have something else too i'll keep that as a wait no we have you gotta just jump to it you just cut what? me off but he should not be donating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Anthony. You got to you gotta hit. I thought I did. Sorry. All right. Then He's having dinner ready for my wife. Have a great night. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Hold on. Did I make one? Yes, yes I did. Yes, <laughs> you did. That's why I was like, we got it. You just got to do it. Here we go. <laughs> the money shrimp. So, so we got that money shrimp on there, of course, because all of this will go right back into the shrimp, right back into content for you guys. So, uh, you know, as long as we can keep this going and stuff like that, 
we shouldn't have any issues with content. We have a endless supply here in the house. What? <laughs> so Dr. Anthony said, because I brought up Jaden, he said, saw him in the background, thought it was a ghost. <laughs> we would have been famous for that. Could have yeah. clipped it out and was like a <laughs> scary, creepy little ghost boy in this person's house. Oh, that's great. He is really skinny, so. All right, back to the guppies. <laughs> the, the guppies are a little bit too big and aggressive for shrimp. Uh, you can have a tank full of guppies but, and shrimp, but I suggest you have a heavily planted guppy grass, hornwort, uh, balsanaria. Those things are going to be your friends for sure with those kind of tanks. Uh, and then lots of little hiding spots. Uh, one of the things I want to get going and trying is Lucas Brett's little uh, rock pile in the back. Every time he's out of, at the house, he's like, no rock piles, huh, man? I'm like, no, I just haven't ever had to use them. So, But who knows? Maybe we could be breeding even more shrimp with the rock piles. So we're going to test yeah. it out. And give we it a had go. rock piles in our Sulawese tank. We had huge rock piles of lava rock, and that helped incredibly. He was like, oh, no, there's not that many shrimp. And I was like, yeah, I know. I never see any, but I think there is. And he's like, yeah. So we kind of started tearing it apart, and there was a ton. And jumping down real quick, DJ Owen, thank you so much. When will you have more green emeralds available, not coals? Can I buy the ones that you really don't want to sell <laughs> with a high-quality colony? Oh, you gotta, you, you gotta do the thing. You, you're, you know, I slack and <laughs> I will have emeralds back on the website in the next week or so. Uh, if you message me, I can, you know, sell them to you a little bit sooner. I definitely have some that I don't want to let go. Um, there's a chance that they can have the the backline on them. I put maybe five or six of them uh, that had the backline in their own tank, and it's Shelby's isopod tank, the aquatic isopod. So uh, they they're nice. I could let some go. I don't know if they're gonna have the backline or not. So you could have some gems. So email me, and uh, we we might be able to help you out. Especially with a bribe, a five dollar bribe that could get you to the top of the list real quick. <laughs> <laughs> all right you 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 Ready catch, to catch up on chat uh, okay you catch up on chat and then we'll yeah so tater asks neo caridina question have you done much work with crossbreeding palmata and davidi that did i can't pronounce that there's not much info on the interwebs so i am going to be the worst person to ask this for i need to do a stream where we come up with alex from the history of living inside your aquarium and you know do something together uh where he teaches me all of the uh different neo caridina locales and the difference between palmata and david i um the only real crosses i've done are and, and been successful crossing is Blue Dreams, Bloody Mary, Red Cherry, Blue uh, Velvet. And I'm pretty sure they're the exact same type of Neo. I don't know about the whole. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll admit when I don't know something. I don't know everything. I just know, hey, this is a good color <laughs> and uh, I can run with it. So, yeah, sorry to let you down. I'm not everything you ever thought you, you wanted. So Big Dog asks, is Pete bad for shrimp tank? No, it's just not everybody's going to like the mess that it makes. It's a little dirty. It's going to brown up the water. It can fall apart and just make a big mess of things. So uh, not a bad thing if you can keep it keep it contained. It's definitely got some beneficial properties to it. Yeah, so said so thanks, Grant and Shelby. Thank you for watching. Ebor Millie, when starting to establish a breeding reputation, would you recommend getting your name out by fish clubs or local fish store relationships? It seems like local fish stores don't prefer small breeders, but it might just be me. No, so <laughs> this is going to depend on your area because you go around in Florida and we walk into these fish stores and it's like, oh, you guys are setting up a breeding room or something. You're buying all these tanks and it's Nobody knows who we are or anything like that. So it's like these 
these mom and pop stores, someone might want some, you know, good quality shrimp if they're having an issue, but chances are they they either have a good source for shrimp already or uh, the, the fish that they're after, or, you know, they, they want it at a way cheaper price than the, what they're already getting it at. So, um, but when we went to Colorado, I don't think there was a single fish store we went to where we didn't get recognized. And this was quite a few years ago. And we're like, we're walking into aquatic, uh, aqua dog and Sheila, who we know now is the owner. And she's like, Oh my God, you guys got any shrimp for us? You bring any for leftover from the club meeting? And I'm like, no, I, they all went at the club. I, I didn't know I should bring any. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was going to have this welcome like this. So we ended up going back to her store and doing a talk, uh, a little demonstration on how to aquascape for her store. And that was really nice. But um, yeah, in Florida, they, they just want to make as much money as they can and not really interested in too much of the lineage and stuff like that. But uh to get your name out there i highly recommend going to the fish clubs because uh the people in the fish clubs will become your family and I, they are my biggest cheerleaders by far uh mike labello he will go up to anybody who has a, a name in some some part of the hobby and go i know this guy grand eater he's got 300 tanks in his house, every shrimp you can name of. And the guy just sells me like I am the higher end guy of the God breeding shrimp guys. And it's just like, all right, Mike, you know, I'm all right, you know, but uh, he he's probably promoted me to more people. Him, Bill Shields, um, these other guys, the main heads of the club, you know, they've been around. They know the who's who and what's what, and they're plugged in so they can get you around, know where uh, the industry needs you at. So especially Bill Shields, he, he'll go around and say, hey, man, this club, I don't know how many times I can speak for this club, but do the same talk now. And I'm like, all right, I, I, could, I can come over there. I love doing the talks. And we've got like three or four different talks now, and we're working on a talk where the two of us do one together. So <laughs> news to me. Okay. <laughs> that's part of the talk. She just comes on stage. She doesn't even know she's doing it. So I, I figured I'd give her like some type of heads up like one day in the future. All right, Shelby, come on down. Now I'm talk about this. Procrastination at its finest. So, but no, we definitely is a talk with the two of us in the future. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll discuss that later. Yellowstone Aquatics said, I just pulled out a bunch of males, but the tank is really, is still really stuck. So I'll try and up the feeding. Yeah. The, the other thing is if it's overpopulated, I'm not sure if it's a 10 gallon tank with like a thousand shrimp, uh, they, they just might have some, some jerks in the tank who just prefer shrimp meat. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. We, we had a, uh, a uh, shrimp named Frank Castro. If anybody knows that met, that reference, comment down below. But uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he would throw he would throw any shrimp in there. Oh, man, I still said that right wrong after I try. Yeah. Any throw <laughs> any shrimp you would throw in the tank with him, he would just bully and bully bully until they were dead. So yeah, the name was quite fitting. He was a terrible shrimp. <laughs> He was so mean. I've never seen shrimps do that someone, before. Someone was mad that they took his fa family away and he was out for vengeance. Mm -hmm. Alan asked, can I put the raccoon tigers in a Neo tank? Yes, sir, you can. So we sent those out for you today. I did not catch those for you. So if you don't have any females, <laughs> blame her. It's all on her. She caught those. It's all right. I left them up to her. Females. <laughs> You were you were just so happy with the the shrimp that she caught for you last time. I was like, you're just taking care of all of Alan's shrimp from now on. Well, I'm obsessed with tigers, so any tigers that go out, usually I catch them, unless so, they're like the black tiger or dry, which I don't touch. Those those are his babies. <laughs> I was gonna say except for one, and then she said it for me, so yeah. I didn't, I didn't have to go there. I don't even touch the tank. I'm like. No, I'm not going to chance it. If one dies, it's my fault. I'm not having that. It's uh, always her fault, though. 
<laughs> it has been. There has been some really bad incidences where I made a, fault, a slight mistake in forgetting very important steps <laughs> and to do a water changes. Oh, it's embarrassing. Dechlorinator. <laughs> save lineups. I know that now. Uh, and he, he likes oh. the super chat video did too. We, did we say hi to Jimmy P? No. Hello, Jimmy P. If we miss you, I am so sorry. That's me. That's my I'm bad. relying on her. <laughs> She's the one with the contacts, and I need to go see an eye doc and get this thing figured out. I can't, I can't see anything but golf balls now. It's a problem. So Alan says he feels for you. He's the same way with computers. So frustrated. I didn't actually love technology, but it doesn't like me. <laughs> and it jumped. See, oh goodness gracious! That's how far behind you are. It's not that bad. My eyesight up close is horrible, but I can see a shrimp from I don't know. 10 feet, 20 feet away, no problem. Matt said he's waiting on Green Jade myself. You got to make a list. It's, it's that bad. It's that Gr bad. Green Jades I could do too. If you want to message me, Matt, I, I could get you some Green Jades because we have moved all of those inside now. I have zero excuses <laughs> other than I don't have a nice picture for them up on the website. Shelby, bless her heart, she worked so hard on that website last night, <laughs> like three, four hours. So if you see some improvements to the website – Give her a round of applause. That's all, Shelby. And uh, well, the first one, sorry, it was me too. But it was I did a really bad job. I really messed things up, messing with colors, and people were like, "I can't figure this out." And I go onto my the website to buy something, and I'm like, "Oh crap! I can't figure it out. That's not good." Oh. We have not taken anything really serious. So like, this has been a hobby that's really just taken over and said, "Hey." This is now what you're doing, and you like it, so you're going to do it. So that's kind of what happened. <laughs> Screaming Fly said, you need an allergy shrimp for tissues and Benadryl. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, if I take a Benadryl, I'm out. I got to go to sleep. Within, like, five minutes, I'm done. <laughs> done for. Tater said, pomata is pearl. Divati. Ah, man, I know that. Chris Davia. used to say this all the time in front of me, and I don't know why I can't remember. But what is per? Um, the the snow, like the snow snowballs and mm. the the jellies and stuff like that. But uh, no, I, like I, I haven't ball. tried crossing those yet. <clears throat> Hello, Chattanooga Ed. How's it going, Ed? Nice to see you. You know that's what I'm missing. The Tennessee fish mafia hat. Oh, I was looking for that the other you day. You miss a lot of stuff. I misplaced something <laughs> and I'm like. Oh. Hello, Mikey's fish tanks. So what is about green jays that make their shells thicker? Do you know their genetic lineage? Oh, All right. sorry. Give me one second before you. And so, uh, hello, Lefty. How's it going, so you man? Can't stick around, just dropping in, like, and heading up to bed. Thank you so much. Hopefully, you rewatch this. And we said thank you. Sorry, I skipped you. All right. So, uh, green jades that have the thicker shells, it's just like all of the, the neocaridinas. Some of them will just have the thicker shells and stuff like that. If you want the line that has all thicker shells, go for the green emeralds. We have a really good video on the difference between green jades and green emeralds. Uh, this stream is about the fish. And we did have a comment on one of the last streams where the, uh, the, the, the title and the theme of everything didn't play out. We had too many questions off topic. So I want to stay more on topic and get back to the list. So. There's only one person I gotta say hi to. All right, and then we're all caught up. Yeah, go for so, it. So, hello, PA Fish Preacher, and then we are caught up finally. All right, so let's <laughs> let's knock some of these fish off the list, shall we? Next on the list, we got the beta fish. Now, now, Shelby, what what what's the odds on somebody being able to keep beta fish with with some shrimp? I think it's a 50-50, if not 75. It, <laughs> it's going to be on the on the downside uh, for sure. But 
you know, some betas, it's fine. Some betas are just monsters. And Shelby found out her beta was just <laughs> savage. Didn't even want to eat them. Just wanted them dead. It was just predator, <laughs> drop, killing bodies, moving on to the next one. And wasn't even worried about filling his belly. So um, he, he, he was, was a no-go. Like there were toys in his tank for him. Like little rubber duckies. The, the female was with some dwarf crawfish. Maybe not the, the highest population boom or anything like that. But and there's a shrimp in there. Yeah, there's some shrimp in there. Wasn't any issues with, with the female. But that tank is a lot, lot bigger, too. <clears throat> so uh, that could be taken into effect. So uh, some some betas are just going to be, or betas, are just going to be natural born killers. And some are just going to be happy, well-fed, lazy, and uh, don't even know the shrimp are in the tank. So... It's it's one of those hit or miss, but if in in any shrimp fish scenario, if you're gonna want to keep them both together, I highly recommend set the tank up, cycle it, run it for 30 days, build the biofilm, then put the shrimp in there, run it for three months with the shrimp in there, and to build up a colony of babies. You know, it might take you two to three months to get your first batch of babies, but after that first batch of babies starts to grow up and have their own babies, then everything's gonna really take off and. Uh, you know, you're not going to have to really worry about some of your shrimp getting picked off about with the fish that you throw in there. Of course, you know, the guppies, some of them could go through, take them all out, the beta, the same thing. But, you know, big enough tank, big enough population of shrimp, and you keep the beta fed with some blood worms and some other tasty treats, maybe you can keep a population in there going, even with the most nasty beta fish. So, um How's it going, Scuba Steve and Guppy Beast? I don't know if we said hi to either one of those people, but not yet. But we did. I skipped a comment. Chattanooga Ed said, "My mom loves her blue shrimp I got from you guys. They're doing great. That is so wonderful to hear." Susan's giving you motherly advice. <laughs> Susan Shelby, can you take zinc? I use the dissolved tablet and symptoms disappear. Ooh, I'm going to have to try that. I don't get them very often. But it's like out of the blue. And it's been lately right before I got to do a live stream. It's like the third time. I don't know. We're going to have to try that, though. I got to do anything to get rid of these. This is annoying me. <laughs> me being a ginger, the only thing we ever use zinc for is we put it on our nose to keep the sun off. <laughs> All right, so the next thing on our list we already kind of talked about was the the killies. Um, some killies are going to be better than others, like the least killies fish. Those are live bearer killies fish, and they are super super tiny. Uh, so those would be a great one to keep with the with the shrimp. Um, some of the other killies fish can get quite big in size, so maybe not keep those with the shrimp. But again, you can keep a colony with with fish going just get the colony of shrimp going how's it going skull aquatics <laughs> she said you're allergic to the internet so we'll have to solve that <laughs> Seems oh, she's, like it. A, she's allergic to getting work done for me <laughs> anytime she gets too much done for me the sniffles come out <laughs> it's it's anytime she has to go digging through something and, and it's dusty in the garage or something like that and then she touches one thing boom it's a dust boss. for sure and the, and the dogs if i uh want to go cuddle my dogs that i instantly get like little hives and it's really bad <laughs> but you also played outside with the kids today and i think that's what it is oh our neighbor's tree has this weird pollen coming out it was probably that you guys were playing outside and hitting the trees so i guarantee it was that and then I thought I saw somebody we got other people coming in. This is your your mission here. You no, gotta, this you is all stay yours. On that. This is on you. I, I got this mission over here. You gotta, you gotta see the, see, the hello, list. Caesar. How many shrimp would you buy to assure there be females and females to breed? I gotta excuse myself. So I, I could buy twelve juveniles and I'd be safe. Uh, I, I I felt like in 200 colonies of shrimp that we've moved or uh so now i've only ever had an issue where i called all of the females out 
two or three times. And it just happened to be with super crystal twice and calcios. So, uh, you know, it, it's the odds are definitely in your favor if you have, you know, around 10 to 12 shrimp. Um, but, you know, it is possible that you end up with all male or all female. But getting juveniles decreases your chance of that happening. So I, I would go for unsexed around 10 to 20. I highly recommend getting one to two shrimp per gallon uh, to start off the tank. So I'm not quite sure how, how big your tank is, but that's where I would start. And then, uh, so I'm going to catch up on her chat. Allergic to all the work she does for Matt. Yeah. I don't know if Matt said that before I said that, but great minds think alike. All right. I'm going to let Shelby worry about this. I am so lost on this chat. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm caught back up, but I think Shelby should catch back up on this. Oh, we got a new member. Hold on. going to have to go ahead and do this, though. Thank you, Ed. I much appreciate that. I will have to let Shelby know when uh, she gets back. We got a new member while you were gone. You missed it. And I, I'm trying to figure out where in chat. Uh, this is where I left off. So if you want to go down. But chat new Ed became a member of the channel. Oh, thank you. So you, you can catch up with the, the next next uh question but i'm gonna dive into the next fish and we got the rummy nose tetra oh sorry go ahead it says if you drink an ounce of schwab's tonic water with the zinc it is amazing i'm gonna have to try that because i am struggling to eat and matt said i'm allergic to all the work that i do for you that that's what i was saying like you said I, it wrong you, <laughs> you said it like i just didn't want to work no, no, no. All that's right. what i meant well someone brought up another fish if you want to do that one next fine the romino's <laughs> tetras those the, nobody likes work. those <laughs> we'll go on to the quarries they're on the list so uh definitely depending on the type of quarry cat i would recommend the pygmies the hastadas the i don't ask me the latin names i'm horrible with that but there's there's like a true pygmy uh quarry and then there's like two other uh quarries as well that stay relatively smaller or considered dwarf quarries and those are fine um but there is a downside with the quarry cats so the quarry cats are like schooling uh and they're also bottom dwellers so what ends up happening is what they do is they'll school around and swim and go in and out of all the little caves and hiding spots where the pregnant females like to hang out. So what ends up happening is the shrimp will get stressed. And we had, I don't know, eight pygmy quarry cats in our uh, red cherry tank. And there was 30 to 40 red cherries, good male to female ratio, but we had zero breeding. And I thought maybe it was just because it was winter season, but February, through April, still no breeding. And I was like, all right, maybe it's the quarry cat. So I took the quarry cats and the very next day we had buried females again. So uh, maybe they're stressing them out. They're using the exact same hiding spots, but it definitely wasn't a good uh, um, pairing uh, on in that tank, but it was a 20 gallon tall. It wasn't the biggest tank. So you can definitely get away with it. We had a tank where it was quarries, bristlenose, plecos, guppies, and shrimp in the tank. But there was not a lot of breeding going on with the shrimp. So it was more of like an enjoyable tank uh, in the living room rather than a breeding tank. Even though we did get, you know, some babies out of all four shrimp or all four fish and shrimp. My suggestion is if you want to have quarry cats in the tank with shrimp, is to try to elevate where the shrimp are on a different level. So moss ledges are a really good idea. Um, a lot more hides and build them up so that the shrimp can be up above where the quarry cats like to be. So it maybe stress them out a little less and be able to breed both of them at the same time. Um, and shrimp do seem to pick at quarry cat eggs. Yeah. Um, we've had that happen. So that really sucks. So hopefully you can get those out before shrimp start picking off them because I learned the hard way. Yeah, one of the cons about keeping shrimp and fish together is the, the shrimp do eat eggs. And some people think that 
the the shrimp are just going to eat the old and moldy eggs or the ones that didn't get fertilized uh they'll eat those first for sure those might be the the smellier tastier ones but after they're done eating those and they're done eating the biofilm and there's enough fish and shrimp in the tank they'll go after the eggs for sure and then Alan asked if pygmy cory cats were bad news for tiger shrimp tank. Mm. Kind of went over that with the yeah. If, if you're worried about breeding, I would I would get them out. If you if you just want something to look at, then then they're they're very pleasant to keep with one another. The the cory cats keep the shrimp on their toes. And I missed something. Have a good night, Susan. Oh, later. She's probably already gone, catching up. I'm going to go back to Romino's Tetras then. Okay. Uh, so the Romino's Tetras, I wouldn't recommend keeping those with Caradina. Uh, we have better luck keeping those in warmer tanks. So uh, the Neo Caradina would be a little bit better. They are, you know, a little bit more of a top uh, swimmer, but they are big enough to eat kind of like a juvenile size uh, shrimp. So... Again, they're going to fall in line with, with some of the other, uh, like, guppy-style fish. Is, is they're a little bit more riskier. Same with sword tails. Uh, same with the larger pea puffers. And, uh, you know, same with the, the larger plecos and stuff like that. We do have some false plecos. Uh, they're a little bit smaller. They grow super, super slow. Um, but they are past that two-inch mark. So if they're not well-fed um they'll come out but our plecos don't eat very much at least the false plecos and i think we have two clown plecos uh they don't come out onto the pile they more kind of eat the the stuff growing on the wood in the tank so uh they, they might not be that bad of an option for you uh, and then the danios the smaller the danio the better the cpd uh which is actually like a resbora but um we do have some of the long fin danios in one of our caradina tanks and uh, those are all breeding and going all right but again not a ton of babies not a, all the berry females are going it is kind of like one of our junk tanks we just throw a bunch of random plants in there from time to time um but again we do have danios and caradina shrimp breeding in the same tank so you got something you want to catch up on so it yourself said new to the hobby, but I was wondering why do so many YouTubers suggest a mono shrimp for algae control? Do the fish eat them? So they are the larger shrimp. And for that reason, uh, a lot of the fish will not eat them because they don't fit in the fish's mouth. But again, there are some larger fish out there that, that will eat the amano shrimp. So uh, the amano's, and shrimp alike, they really don't eat too much of the algae. What they do is they eat the leftover pieces of food, the biofilm and other stuff like that. They keep the surfaces clean. Um, so what's gonna happen is uh, a surface will get covered in biofilm and then the shrimp will come over and eat the biofilm and then biofilm will grow back over that and then they will eat it. If the shrimp weren't eating the biofilm, then the biofilm would grow and then over the top of the biofilm, algae would grow. So they're not really eating the algae. They're more like keeping the tank clean in the sense of their algae prevention. And then on top of that, they will eat algae if it is dying. Like I have people like, oh, I pull hair algae out of one tank and throw it into another tank and all the shrimp eat it. Well, that's because the hair algae in one tank is because of an issue in that one tank. And when you move it into the other tank, that tank doesn't have that issue. And so when you throw the algae into that tank, it's dying right away. It's just turning into shrimp food when it's dying. But healthy, strong, growing hair algae, the shrimp are not going to eat it. They're going to get caught up in it, trying to find their food source, and they're going to drown. And, or, you know, deprive of food and oxygen and get ca caught up in, and die. So definitely avoid using them as algae eaters. You want to take care of the reason for the algae first. And then kind of use the shrimp to keep up on top of your issue. Gary said the lightning have eliminated the panthers. The lightning. And I haven't watched the lightning game in like years. 13 years probably. I've never even been able to go to one yet. 
uh, Chattanooga Ed said he's, he's I a shrimp in the tank. <laughs> love it. That's what it's all about. I love it. Thanks for joining the team, man. Axolotl, what is a good TDS and pH? So axolotls are great in neutral pH, so 7 to 7.4. Uh, TDS, they are, you know, at the top of a mountain, so not, not too high of a, a TDS, probably under 200 would be good for them, but don't quote me on that. Cause I don't know how high of a TDS they can go up to and stuff like that, but we definitely know neutral pH is, is where you want to aim for them. Uh, if they're having like a fungal issue or something like that, you can lower the pH to, to kind of the fight those issues. Uh, we just kind of take them out, put them into a container with RO water and uh, some Indian almond leaves. But other than that, we never try to drop the pH. Yeah, I've actually seen a lot of people uh, recently do like 90% water changes on them daily. Um, and they keep it pretty soft and cold. And it's that's why they do it every day is because they um, it's really clean. And the shallow water, it stays cold when they keep doing it every single day. And then I don't know how I skipped this one on the list, but the, the flower horn. So it's a fish we have oh, in yeah. the house. I figured, hey, we might as well talk about it. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a big no. The flower horn is going to go after anything <laughs> that that is going to be in the tank. Uh, flower horn is going to be solo dolo and nothing else in there. So um, that's a big no. The other big no is going to be the angel fish. Um, but... Because the angels, unlike the flower horn, the angels you can keep in a very well-planted tank. You can get away with breeding some neos in an angelfish tank, or angels or some maybe are actually really some slow. yellow king kongs. And I was I was wanting to set up her tank with yellow king kongs in it, uh, in this tank right here before uh, the danios and her dudgeons went in there but i was going to set it up with yellow king kongs and then move the angels i thought the black and yellow would be a really cool pair she's got the black angels up there if you guys haven't seen them already <laughs> and this person says they have orange lasers which we do too we'll try them with uh some shrimp one day maybe yeah, but with those, I'd be worried about the shrimp eating the eggs. Yeah. So I, I'd want to keep as many of the eggs as we possibly could for the, the, the orange lasers. Chad hitting us up with all the Latin names. Beautiful. Can't say that. Was no, I at least right with the hastatus? Or did I hit, say yeah. hastus or something like that? I think, you, I think you got pretty close with that one. Probably said hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> we're taking a hiatus from sharp <laughs> crypt keeper said becoming a member thank you so much and then uh the next thing on our list is going to be rainbows again there's going to be some huge rainbows some smaller rainbows we really like the the blue eye or the the fork tail the split tail uh rainbows those are ones shelby is highly after i have a club member who uh, was supposed to bring you some to the club meeting, but How dare they? was not able to. So we will be getting you some of those at the next meeting, hopefully for sure. If uh -huh. not, uh, we can always take a trip down there and do a little video because we got the video of the tank rack coming up. And then I want to dive outside. Uh, we have big plans for outside. Imagine you diving into the gravel out no into the pool we got a pool outside why i mean you could at least or into an ibc tote if this if this chat can get, get to 100 views or 100 <laughs> people on the stream i'll do a hundred dollar gift card and then i'll dive into one of the ibc totes so there's that you know stay tuned for that we already lost the person nobody <laughs> wants to see that so uh the the rainbows uh, the the basamis and stuff like that. I don't think I'd keep those with with shrimp. But again, like the angel fish, you could probably get away with it. And then uh, that that's all the fish in the house. Unless no, we got the mollies. The mollies yeah, are going to be vicious. I, I figure those will will go after the shrimp. Um, but I know like Mason. Mason keeps mollies and shrimp in in barrels outside. So 
I was going to put some of the mollies in with some of the coal ponds outside, but we've been selling a lot of coals lately, so I didn't want to do that. I got to keep as many shrimp in, in house as we can right now. So, and then we got, we got S, the mysterious S has joined the chat. How's it going, man? Hello. And then, uh, see, see, he's a very popular, lots of people. I've seen him in other streams before. Just next. If we ever meet in person, you have to introduce so, yourself. Somebody's as going to his house. I'm horrible <laughs> with memory and stuff like that. But somebody's like, yeah, I get to go, go stay with, uh, and hang out with the mysterious S. So <laughs> we, we, we might even know who it is. And it's just, we lack connecting certain dots yeah um let's just say i've been going to the same club with people for years and can't remember their names there's like 80 to 100 people so yeah fun fact chad just isn't used for fish names he's used for people <laughs> names too <laughs> sorry chad you're the At encyclopedia your name as long as someone talks to me for longer than five minutes i usually remember your name especially if you introduce yourself <laughs> I don't think I said hello to our aquatic universe with Mike B. Hello. How's it going? I'm going to snuck in here. Alan asks, what is the cross that you made with the yellow King Kong hybrids? Just curious. So those are from two different lines now. Um, we have them from crossing with Aurora's. And then what ends up happening is the yellow King Kong gene just comes back so strong that when you cross them back with one another, they just produce all like yellow King Kong looking shrimp. But I am getting like some uh, white stripes on some of them. So I've been going for like my own tiger galaxy. Uh, it would be quite different than the galaxy, yellow galaxy pintos that are out on the market. But uh, the, the stripings are a little bit different. Um, no no dots on the head like the other ones so and no fishbone either but there, it might come out Jaden made a second trip was that Jaden? yeah just just take <laughs> the I tissues to your room buddy <laughs> okay all right it's no eyes that scared me shelby scares uh, very easily no yeah a little bit <laughs> See, War Millie said, ever had scissor tail resboras? Been looking at those and rummy nose to have schooling fish. Uh, we have no. rummy nose. You no, know, we runny nose. <laughs> she has a runny nose, and I got a rummy nose. Tetris. We've just been two wanting days them ago. for years. Yeah. So, um, we have not tried those resboras. We have the uh, CPDs, and we have some green eyed resboras, and that's about it. So, uh we need we want to get our hands on more the resboras are relatively smaller fish in general so uh i highly recommend if you want to keep a schooling fish and something in shrimp yeah he does that's the first time i've seen him in the background so uh that's funny <laughs> he's so pale <laughs> yeah he doesn't even look that pale in real life the kid the kid actually is not he has none of my ginger complexion at all he actually tans got my skin luckily <laughs> and would color would provide protection for the shrimp please do not put this in your tank i absolutely what did you say oh uh, sorry cholo wood <laughs> no what did you say what it's choya it's oh my gosh come on i still hate How? every pronoun gonna, gonna i hate this piece 15, of wood so much 15 episodes of Crime pays, but botany doesn't. That's the it's only reason why the I know thing. it. He the has guy an is... accent, though. That's not even like. Hey, what's wrong with an accent? Huh? He could be pronouncing things wrong. That's what's wrong with an accent. Oh, this is Choyawood, huh? Oh. Someone, and, and he, he goes. Look you? at the stamens <laughs> on this thing, huh? Oh. It's beautiful. You, you gotta yeah, love a good accent. Stems, That's but... why everybody watches Mark Shrimp Tank. I mean, a. The guy knows his stuff, but B, I mean, who doesn't love that accent? So back to the question, if the piece of wood is big enough, it could provide protection, but them getting in and out of it might be a problem. 
Um, I do not recommend this for tanks because it does break down. It does take a little bit to break down. It could be like a year or so, depending on what kind of style could you be get. Could a month, though. But, yeah, and then it becomes a huge moan bomb. And um, I despise anything that creates that much moan in the tank. I don't... I mean, it's not that bad, but it could cause an issue in the long run, and it does not look pretty. Yeah, no, I stopped using it in our tanks a long time ago. It's it's a cheap wood. You could easily throw it into 100 tanks, and it not cost that much money, but I'd rather t spend five to ten times more money for spider wood, something that's going to last a long time before it breaks down. Hey, Jess, thanks for stopping by. How's it going? <laughs> now you're gonna say He's something else real over quick. Here. <laughs> you usually oh, got so a couple <laughs> things you ramble off. I don't, I don't like to interrupt you. <laughs> so Crypt Keeper said, um, "Grant and Shelby, for a Caradine and Coal Tank, what fish could you recommend? Also, what ornamental snails grow quickly enough that the low pH doesn't affect shell as badly?" So obviously Malaysian trumpet snails. Uh, oh, that's not an ornamental snail, though, is it? I don't know the difference. I we but have some Malaysian trumpet snails, and they're really the only ones that survive really well in most of our Caradina tanks. The ram's horns are like a hit in the miss. Some of them just deteriorate at old age. Some of them will will survive as babies. Um, but not, not get very large at all. But uh, the, the breeding eventually will come to an end in a lot of our Caradina tanks with the ram's horns. The pH is just too low. Um, but the Malaysian trumpet snails, those things are beasts. They they seem to break through. But like breeding in our Caradina tanks compared to our neo Caradina tanks, the, the acidity has to have some type of effect on them because... Uh, they just do not grow as fast or they don't breed as fast. Maybe the eggs survival rate is a lot lower in a lower pH or something like that. But um, the the Malaysian trumpet snails will be on the website this week. I'm, I'm laying that into effect. No longer by the end of this month. It'll be this week. And um, we'll have like an option, hopefully, where you could choose Neo parameters or Caradina parameters or maybe just tell you to write in the notes where you want them from, but we should be able to get you those. And I can do smaller ones for you too. So that way they acclimate and adapt to your parameters a lot better. Did you answer the fish that you could put in a caradina? Wait, what? The lower pH. Did you? Oh, fish? what fish? What fish? What do you recommend? Autos, panda loaches. Panda loaches are absolutely adorable until they get <laughs> old and decrepit and brown and sorry looking. So uh, that's when you move them into a fish tank. Um, but the, the CPDs, the Ember Tetras, those, those are all good ones for the Caradina tanks that we've, we've kept in there. And they do really well. Matt said to get your Speedo ready. You're right. diving in. <laughs> I don't think I, I fit in that. So Galaxy Res 4, <laughs> I think you would. You got See, this. See, I, I thought I was go so good when I like broke my ankle and didn't lose any uh, or didn't gain any weight. But the thing was, it was when I broke my ankle, it was so hard for me to go to the kitchen and snack and get food. Now that it's now I can walk, I, I'm just walking and eating everywhere now. I got two hands, one hand I'm feeding myself. So I, I put on some weight. I don't think I could fit in the speedo. <laughs> so big, big dog ass galaxy or resboras with shrimp. Yeah, yeah, those are the CPDs, the galaxy resboras. They got two different names. Some people call them the celestial pearl danios. Others call them the galaxy resboras. <laughs> Sorry, I skipped ahead and read something. <laughs> I was just supposed to. Um, We're not that far now. Hello, mountain. Guppy Beast, my fire red coal tank turned into brightest shrimp tank. What's up with that? Best looking Neos was a dumpster. Hey, that that happens That's sometimes. It, they, they can flip flop. A lot of times you end up culling too early. And as they mature, 
um, they, they grow up. And another thing is, is a lot of times your males are going to be, uh, you know, lower grade. And what happens is you call your really nice male because you're thinking it's a low grade female. And then he grows up to be a male stud in the coal tank and he's studding it out and he's hitting all the females. And next thing you know, he's the daddy to all the other studs in the tank that you, you now have. So it, one stud can flip flop a tank real quick. Alan said, Rummy Nose Tetras are my absolute favorite fish in the community tank. And the second one, Dennis and Barbs, they both have spectacular color. Barb, barbs are a little vicious, though. I think that they'll chow down on some shrimp. So <laughs> how's it going, Chris? How you doing? And how you doing, Sage? I'm catching up. I've lost fish to Cholo Wood. They Wait. get stuck. I'm never going to pronounce Wait. that right. Strike two. Strike three. You're <laughs> off the shrimp. Okay. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> oh. Video completely jammed on my end. Restarting phone to see if it's working again. If not, have a good night. Oh. Let's hopefully we get you back. Oh, my goodness. At, at least the audio worked tonight. I don't know if you guys <laughs> caught our last stream started off the stream it was great i i hit every line that i wanted to on point and then brian's like i can't hear you i'm like oh man i'm sorry this is this is what i was laughing about a second ago but he said he wants to let us know he's been ordering all the burritos but now yes hey, hey listen okay so you can live your entire <laughs> life this way you don't just have to do burritos you can do wings <laughs> You can do a series of different foods wet. Yeah. I prefer my cannolis wet with extra chocolate drizzle and stuff like that. It's just a, it's a way of life now, man. Yeah, we go to Chili's and we get it uh, the fully, fajitas wet. fully loaded, and you get the fajitas with queso on it. A lot of people don't; they never offer it. You know, it's like you just have queso for these. Uh, we love it. And thank you, Liquid Matt. Liquid Matt. Sorry, <laughs> getting late. Liquid Matt. He said he bought two 85 totes today. They are huge. I could I could fit in that thing. I, I don't know if Eddie is watching right now, but Ed, if you guys haven't watched the series with Eddie, go check that out. I'm going over You're there tomorrow. Going to <laughs> We're going over there tomorrow. Help him build a stand to get ready for more tanks, but calls me up today and he's like hey man you trying to get more ibc totes and i'm like yeah uh it's just with my ankle and everything like that i'm trying not to push it and i don't want to lift any of them so i need a hand moving all the ibc totes in place and shelby's like if i can see them you can't put any more on the side of the house from the front so i'm like all right i gotta move and push everything back in place before i can get more so i need i need eddie to really come over and help me do that but <laughs> He's like, oh, I found 25 IBC totes. We can get them for 35 bucks a piece. I can throw like eight of them on the trip. See, look at this. She's like, what? who was that on the phone? I waited for her to go get the kids from the bus stop before we started talking about that. Um, but yeah, we can get a bunch of IBC totes. And Eddie's trying to set up a bunch of them too. So uh, got, got big things going on. <laughs> Here. We have like no room. I, I want sink. just enough room in the backyard that I could put a wheelbarrow down the back and still get to all my fish. Well, tubs. wheelbarrow, for but what? have like a we can fit 160 of them to 180 back there. I and know. We only have we only have like 70 Continue. right now. So Robert we, said, "I love chili restaurants in my coal tank with panda loaches. I want some of those chili restaurants. We're gonna have to be we're gonna have to get those. I always forget it. Those are the little tiny red we ones. We have right? one." We have one. It's one in the more. Caradina tank in the in the kitchen by the back door. <laughs> I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Shelby uh, got him ages ago and just chilling. Yeah. He's like three years old in that we tank We have now. one of them. <laughs> oh. And Chad said, I'm counting translator. Big word person as an honor badge. I like that. Oh, man. Hello, Victoria. It jumped. You didn't see it jump. No? Did I miss things? Yeah, it jumped. Here. You see, you're not even scrolling up. It jumped again. It's not even letting us. Oh. 
Yeah, cool. Right First there. time viewer, welcome. Thanks for watching. Hello, Thuddy Waters. That's Never a, heard of that. That's a great name. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're two completely different fish. Well, that shows what I know about fish. I thought they were the same. Yeah, we've had this discussion before. A lot of people will argue with us about that, too. No, I've had... Yes. That's like a big discussion online, too, is that when you look up celestial CPDs, it comes up galaxy resboras. It's actually quite... Maybe they're just missold a lot, and that's mm -hmm. why I thought they were the same. That's a I lot with shrimp. We get yeah. different names for shrimp um, all the time. The blue dreams, the blue sapphires are the same thing. The fantasy blues, the blue diamonds, those are the same thing. Crypt keepers in Canada? He's bouncing off a Canadian tower right now on St. Lawrence River. Is yeah, that Michigan? Uh, no. no. I don't think it's Michigan. That's crazy. Lost completely. <laughs> Gonna have to finish the stream and replay. Oh no. Oh man, we should put like a code, like in, in like 15 minutes. Somebody <laughs> remind me and I'll give Crypt Keeper like a code. And if you can message me that, like I'll send him a free Crypt package. <laughs> I Matt said I could only make I could make so many comments about what Brian's brain. <laughs> That was a that was a great restaurant though, and it was way cheaper. Like, we went to our our restaurant and we spent like eighty nine dollars with tip. Just see it with the kids. It's good. It's just as good as the other restaurant, and like half the price. Yeah. Scuba said, "Yay for queso, boo for enchiladas." There was so sauce. much queso too at that place. I feel like we left so many so much queso behind. It was a disgrace. Which place? At, in, oh, in at Tennessee. The other, yeah, it wasn't good queso. That was terrible queso. I wasn't yeah, bad. I would never go back because of the queso. The problem was good. the queso came out after our food. If no, the queso it came out first, it was it was that, it was weird. Even Ed's like, yeah, that is weird. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> it did take a long time. Yeah, Ed. but you have to get the right enchilada sauce. Um, one of our places here has like a green enchilada sauce, and it's really good, really good. Oh my goodness. It's not that bad. Okay, this one wasn't that bad. It's just, it's we're right on that. So next time there's a shrimp contest, can you swing by and pick me out some second place shrimp? <laughs> Where do you even live? Do you live near here? But, so, no, we can't do that. Sorry. <laughs> so I think this is Jeremy. I, I don't know. I could be wrong, but um, he said second place shrimp. So that, that's why I think so. Uh, the next shrimp contest and registration is now live. Go to aquashella.com, <laughs> go down all the way down to contest, and you'll find the shrimp contest there. You can register your shrimp there. $25 per group, three to five shrimp to enter uh, and enter your best, biggest looking twin triplets, quadruplets. Don't enter twins, enter many more shrimp than that. But, um, can't enter more than five or you'll be disqualified um if you, i think you're in texas man you shouldn't try and make it out if i'm if it's the right person I'm assuming <laughs> you do that you're sometimes but he did look it up said that we might be right about the cpds stand corrected oh hey <laughs> we never know we're hey, still I, dabbling i will fish. admit i don't know everything i i didn't know about the the neo thing so like i'll admit when i it's not my expertise and i'll, I'll stand down but i try to listen to everything bill shield says and i try to just remember exactly what that says even if it means forgetting something that shelby told me to do five <laughs> minutes ago yeah 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 so just excuses excuses I, I believe that's something that he said Eddie, doing water changes and cleaning up room right now. 
I'm glad I found those. Waiting on response from seller on IBC. Let's get it. I accidentally messaged the seller myself. I wasn't trying to, but I clicked on the link and then clicked something else with my fat thumb. And yeah, and then clicked like a hundred letters this, with his fat thumb. Is this <laughs> still available? And I was like, oh man, I didn't mean to. Re I was trying to look at the person and see if it's the same person that I messaged with uh, before. There was somebody that was willing to drive me 25 IBC totes. I just had to pay extra. But not all the IBC idea. totes look good. But I like my I want... food over there. I need my fried okra. And I'm so sorry I'm talking about this right now, Matt, after reading this comment. <laughs> Don't I'm hungry to have any in yet. I'm so sorry. Go get food. Uh, so it, it is confirmed. CPDs and galaxies are the same fish. We, I have had this discussion too many times. I forget. I'm they're like, not actually a Danio. They're a Rasbora. I think that's what the conversation was. Yeah. Or the argument is. is are they a Rasbora or are they not a Not argument, just confusion or, and overall. <laughs> or all Rasboras, Danios. I can't remember. So, Chad? All, Chad, are you there? <laughs> see, they're all Danios or Rasboras or Rasboras. Or yeah. Rasboras. Uh, no. We're going to have to figure that out. It was just me. I don't know. I don't know. How do you get Super Tiger Caradino? Where do they come from? So I think it was you that said we had nice wild type shrimp. Super Tigers are a wild type shrimp. And they're like one of the shrimp that I'm like the strictest about because. Not all of them have the yellow face, but some of them have the yellow face. So you should look at colony shots before you buy your super tigers and make sure that some of the shrimp will have the yellow face. If you see any of the, the tiger stripes that come out like an orange-eyed blue tiger shrimp, uh, I would avoid those, especially if they're like, oh, I had an orange-eyed super tiger pop up in my colony. Um, th those are probably super tigers mixed with orange-eyed blue tigers to get more of one one of the other shrimp and uh yeah they're, they're mudded up it's very very po uh, popular for red tigers to be crossed with orange eyed blue tigers and stuff like that to try and make super tigers but it's not possible super tigers are, are wild caught shrimp so get them from a good source i don't think we have them up on our website but uh maybe next month <clears throat> super tigers yeah hopefully they're all tiny right now we have tons of babies. Guppy said he's an hour away from the club in Ocala, oh, okay. Florida. Matt, just, Matt forget something. Shelby told him, like, no more totes. <laughs> I said, no more totes until he moved the ones we currently have. I see what because I did. there's no physical way to put them anywhere in the backyard because he blocked off the backyard with IBC totes. So for him to bring 10 more... Where are we supposed to put them in front of our yard? Like we're not already thought of crazy people in the neighborhood. I don't need to advertise it on the front yard. And I spend a lot of time on my garden in my front yard to look like we are normal people. And, okay. and speaking of your garden and that side of the house, I'm surprised you haven't said anything because it's very hard for you to walk down there, huh? I made it like impossible for you to go anywhere past the faucet. For the hose, all the cardboard. All oh the... yeah, no, that's what I have this giant bruise on my leg from is because of the ladders there, no, and then all clumsy. this IBC totes. Don't no, blame the ladder. You give us like don't blame the ladder. It's I've like it. one foot don't. for me to go to water it's my garden. I have one foot of like it's like fourteen feet down the house to go turn on the hose, and yeah, when you have IBC totes and ladders on the ground, it's just kind of hard to get around everything. I uh, I am clumsy, but not that clumsy. Okay, <laughs> needs a I need a little bit more room here. And wait till you see her face when I tell her that me and Ed are gonna weld the IBC totes on top of each other. She just doesn't Grants know for sale. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants him? Start bidding. Let's go. <laughs> and Tatanuga Ed said, Matt, you could come over and have a ton of chili. Sounds really good right now. No, I'm sorry. It killed my stomach. My stomach is on fire. We had, chat, chat. We had fun today, and I, I spiced mine up way too much. And 
you know, week, I week. I ate all. I ate all my jalapenos. Somebody wouldn't even eat theirs. Okay. Jalapeno is way spicier to me than chili spice. It burns my mouth. I can eat a whole thing of chili spice. Do it both. You can't Double it up. Eat. Huh? So the Danios, the CPDs are Danio margaritas. I had to look that up because I didn't know if that was a real fish or not. <laughs> That's not how you say it, but it looks like it says margaritas. And Jamie's computer died, and he's back on the phone. Welcome back. Oh. Is Backups that camera nice. gets turned off real fast? We know. Why. <laughs> oh, and Big Dog asked if axolotls breed a lot. Um, so they can. They they certainly can. I think we had one axolotl breed like eight hundred babies for us one year. It was like three yeah. batches. And then a and cat ate them all. Maybe not 800, but definitely like 153 times. So 450, no problem. And cat ate them with no problem. And that was Hence just why we don't have cats. That was just one female. So if you have multiple females, and, and the thing about them is, is that they can be carnivorous when they're babies. So they'll, they'll eat one another. So you got to keep them separated. And Matt said, does he come with a shrimp or without? Without. We're not moving this up. He comes without. Sorry. It's all mine now. But I have <laughs> I have the uh, the formula. Yeah. The knowledge comes with me. I just have it all. I don't, I don't need any Just formula. imagine the liquid zoo we could build together. <laughs> uh, and Chad said, Rasboras and Daniels are both geniuses in the same family. That makes sense. Thank you for answering that long debate. We're gonna, you're gonna have to like live stream yourself into our club oh. meeting. So, we <laughs> Chad, would you like to do a talk for the Pasco Club? Is that something you'd like to do before you uh, you head out into the sunset and leave our club forever and never say hello again? <laughs> you should at least leave us with some information that uh, you feel the club is lacking without you. Yeah, we I can always like, use more talkers. Yeah, and and you are by far one of the most informative person in the in the club. So if you want to do a talk, I would love to hear it, especially uh, you know while you're a local and I don't have to pay to bring you down. But if the talk <laughs> is so good, I'll be like, hey, in a year or two, let's bring Chad down here. We can pay. We can afford this. Let's let's make it happen. I think a lot of people would enjoy that. So. Another person we should bring down is Jimmy to do a talk. Who's, oh. Is he doing okay? I'm sure he is. He says he watches our videos all the time. He, not the live streams, but when we post videos, he does. So he might be here right now, and he's like, I'm here. <laughs> Questions. Rabbit snails, favorite food? Um. So our rabbit snails eat anything but live plants are probably their favorite food they <laughs> and not anubis or boost or like the harder thicker leaves or anything like that but the subwasser tang was a quick snack for them and moss and, in general and then guppy grass hornwort stuff like that it just got gobbled up really quickly but um you can't go for another 20 minutes I mean, we can we can wrap it up. There's there's nobody asking any more questions, and I mean, <laughs> Ruben just got a lot of Ruben. <laughs> yeah, see, we're, we're we're here for another twenty minutes. I'm going struggling. Strong. It's my nose. I'm I'm sleepy too. <laughs> she's she's like, oh, I'm gonna go to bed, but then she'll watch Forensic Files or something for like two hours and and keep me from falling asleep and. I'll be like, we could have just streamed for a little bit longer. So you need time to settle down. I don't know. Sorry. We did how much are axolotls where we are? So we are lucky enough that we have a couple breeders in our club. I didn't ask how much the axolotls were um at the, the swap meet, but I I'm able to get a a very decent axolotl three to four inches for around 30 bucks from one of the breeders but he's a good friend of ours 
Um, I've seen them recently at Repticon for as much as forty to sixty dollars for smaller ones. So always look for uh, local breeders and stuff, and, uh, club members and whatnot, uh, for the best deals. But I I'm surprised the price of them has gone up as much as they have. But I'm not surprised because I I have a kid and our kids play a ton of minecraft and axolotls are like the new big thing they're not even new they're they've been in the game for like a year and a half two years but they're still like the coolest thing that they've added anytime soon our kids are still going on about them we've got a lego set now for axolotls and uh so the, the, yeah the popularity of them has gone through the roof Therefore, the demand of them has gone up. So the price has gone up. But I still think you should be able to find smaller ones, like real small ones for like $15 a piece. Especially just basic uh, white ones or the black ones. Now they have like ones with gold flakes in them. Like the amount of axolotls nowadays is crazy from when we first got our first one more available the the, the varieties were out there just not as many people were breeding them and sharing their stock yet but axolotls uh while we're talking about them they're not a great thing to keep with the the shrimp at all they uh they have hunted down any shrimp that we've thrown in their tank mind you there's not a lot of hiding spaces for the uh the shrimp to kind of get out of the way so the axolotls they They've hunted them down and, and gobbled up all the green jade coals that we've tried to establish in there. Hello, Fishy Mon. How's it going? And then uh, anybody got some fish down in chat, some questions about shrimp or anything like that? We'd love to, to answer those for you. Uh, we've got a couple giveaways coming up in the future. We're less than... Um, 50 people now on the uh, YouTube. Uh, once we hit 3K subscribers, the very next uh, stream that we do, we will give out a $100 gift card to the website. Uh, there is a couple of YouTubers out there who should be doing a video of our house. Not our house. Jason's doing a video of our house, but that has nothing to do with the, the discount code. Uh, if you guys watch Peck Tech, uh, he will be doing an unboxing video, and I gave him a code. So if you guys are looking to get some shrimp in the near future, check out his channel for that. And then somebody already got the right answer on the uh, Instagram giveaway. A lot of people were guessing orange eye green, really, orange eye emerald, orange eye, you know, this and that. But it was just like a a flake of food or something that got stuck on the the shrimp's nose and made it look like it was orange eye but if you looked right behind the flake you actually saw the actual eye of the shrimp so uh it went ungotten for quite some time but somebody did guess green jade green emerald really and you could guess as many times as you want so uh it was an emerald really he did get that right but you look like you're about to click on something. I was leaving it to you. <laughs> so Guppy B asks, favorite shrimp snack from the grocery store? So so Shelby loves fried zucchini. So it's probably zucchini because when we don't cook enough of the zucchini, and, and not just fried, like we smoke it, cook it other ways as well. But uh, the zucchini, cooking it up, throwing the extra to the shrimp as long as you don't season it or, or oil it up first. It's a great one and then the the french style cut beans the french cut green beans sorry uh those are another great one as well i am looking up this because i'm confused oh, okay i have shrimp in my packable packable mm. that's interesting <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's I'm just maybe. trying to see, like, because I know it kind of packable, I think, in the, but it could be like a bowl that you squish down and pack in your backpack. <laughs> I don't know. 
I'm kind of confused. If it's what on Shelby that one. searched off, I hope it's not a big shrimp. I hope it's just one and you do your regular <laughs> water changes on them. <laughs> Thuddy Water said, Do you feed your shrimp powdered food? I find that if I feed pellets, the snails swarm on it and crowd crowd out the shrimp so they don't get any. All right. So we do not feed any powdered foods. I, I was feeding powdered foods at first, and then I found that when we stopped feeding the powdered foods, the water clarity was a lot better, a lot less hair allergy. We're having a lot less issues with our strip overall, and our baby survival rate actually went up. Uh, Shelby is like, oh, the snails in this tank over and overeat. Well, uh, if the if you can't see the food after an hour, you feed another piece of food and, and get enough food for the shrimp in there. But uh, it's it's uh, one of those things where the snails are probably leaving a nice little goo behind that the shrimp are eating after it. So um, they'll definitely still get some food because they the snail can't eat all of it. It like falls into the cracks and that's what the shrimps end up getting. Um, I say that all the time to him because some of our uh, Malaysian trumpet snails and stuff like that will overtake a tank real quick. And also if the shrimp get hungry enough, they will grab a snail and rip him out of his home and eat him. I've seen it happen. They are mean. <laughs> and can I add Oscars to my shrimp tank? Ask Ruben. I mean, you could try. I'm <laughs> just kidding. That, that's going to be. Food? I mean, you weren't here when we talked about the flower horn. That's going to be right in line <laughs> with the flower horn. A, no no, t no plants in an uh, Oscar tank or anything like that. So, yeah, I mean, you can do a bunch of fake plants. Like, I, I want to see somebody super glue fake plants <laughs> to the bottom of the tank so that way the Oscars can't mess it up. Like, I don't know why ha somebody hasn't done that. I just feel like it'd be funny. I think that Oscar would just get so pissed off. Ah, <laughs> didn't work. Ah, still didn't work. Our, uh, Try it again. Our flower horn actually doesn't use, move the big pebbles, though. I'm actually surprised. I can get for $50 Canadian here. What can you get for fifty dollars? The axolotls. Oh, that's what okay. I was sitting there processing. So sorry. I'm thinking but. you're talking with a pack of bowl here. <laughs> so scarlet bandits are they good with shrimp? They they are another one that I I have I have zero experience with, so I don't have them on the list. But a lot of people I, said I they want do. them. Uh, they are. I think I messaged oh. Gary and told him to, to, to start researching them and uh, whatever, you know, is in high demand and, and works really well with shrimp. I'm going to try and get Gary to breed and work with him so that way we can keep these shrimp available for the hobby. So that that's going to be one of the, the fish I want to get my hands on and try them out in a nice scape tank. Uh, another one is the, the shell dwellers, the shellies. Uh, we got some multi-fisciatus, I think, and we want to try those out with some like neocaridinas. And then um, maybe one day we'll have a huge population boom of like Cardinal Solo SA shrimp or something and do a, do a mixed tank of those. But that's a really hard one for me to do. I don't <laughs> know if we'll be able to get pull the trigger on that. How you doing, Stephen P? How's it going, man? Nice to see you. Oh, goodness. I, I don't know how many times someone said the, the chat jumps, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Now you know. <laughs> Skip, Skip said, I pack lots of bowls. <laughs> I'm so upset we didn't do the bowl challenge. There's the macro uh, bowl challenge. Algae one? Yeah, but I could have done freshwater yeah. algae and just thrown everybody off. And like, oh, that's not, that's not salt water. But it's like there was nothing that said it had to be salt water in the contest. <laughs> I just never got around to doing it. I even found the bowl in the uh, um, garage, and I was like, oh, I was going to sell it in the swap meet. I'm like, no, nah, I'll put it aside. I'll set up the bowl. And then uh, Lakeisha Kiki posted she made it into the finals. Oh, cool. So Congratulations I, if you're watching. I, went, I know she watches the video sometimes. I went and voted for her, and then uh, got really sad that I never pulled the trigger and did my, my thing. Uh, so big dog asks, can you keep three axolotls in one tank and fish? No. All right. 
Axolotls and fish are a no-no for me because the fish, they will go after the gills on the axolotl. So if not I that, like, the, the axolotls will just follow them home. I, I like to be able to see the gills of the axolotls. We use the gills to be able to tell if they're healthy, the nice, the fluffier the gills, the pinker, the redder the gills, the healthier, depending on the type of axolotl, of course. But um, they're, they're, they're great to have, and I don't like to have the fish pecking at them. So Richard said, I believe that means scaping, a scaping competition for pack a bowl. Because Fisherman said, I aquascaped a three gallon bowl with lots of plants, which is really cool. Hopefully, we can right. find out where we could see that. Somebody was having a bowl contest besides. Oh, oh, some. Bex, maybe, I think, is having it. So, so... Another, I saw that. How did that slip my mind? You, you looked it up and then you made my mind go a different way. And I totally, you looked it up before I saw the comment. Next. How long can you keep shrimp in a breeder box? All right. So th this is going to be depending on the situation and everything like that. But uh, some people have kept, you know, colonies of shrimp in breeder boxes for many years and not had any issues for us. Um, the smaller the tank and everything like that, the slower the shrimp grew up, the, the slower the breeding was. And I had the room to set up another 10 gallon tank. So I didn't need the breeder box anymore. So I got rid of the breeder box. Uh, I was having weird deaths in some of them and stuff like that. And just a lot less issues using the 10 gallon tank. So we don't use breeder boxes very often, but, uh, in a pinch or something like that, we could use it. I'm going to have to just shove some tissues up in your nose. Sorry. Everybody can hear it. The mic picks up everything. I'm just kidding. No, it Probably does not. It. Yeah, everybody was giving her. Have a good night, Victoria. I'm and Jess says, I have axolotls that are about five inches long right now. That's so cool. There's an axolotl in the Ripley's, believe it or not, that's like 16 or 18 inches long. I skipped a comment. I feel so bad. Oh, no. You're going all the way back up here to find it? Mm-hmm. All right. Good luck. Oh. Nope. thought you had it. So, like I said, mentioned earlier before we went back to chat, we're less than 50 subscribers away. So, if you guys haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that. And then the very next live stream, a $100 gift card will be going out to the channel. And then on Facebook can't remember how many away we are on that but it was like less than 250 or something like that and we'll be giving one away on there as well so you know on all of our social media platforms there will be something a little bit different going on uh i don't think we're going to be posting any more youtube shorts uh, on the channel unless there's something really cool that we want to share on all the platforms a lot of our shorter videos that we're going to be doing on tiktok Shelby's got her own TikTok. If you saw the one that we posted today, Shelby had her own idea for a video. And uh, I had the same idea and I took it and she's like, oh, I had that idea for a video. And I was like, oh, well, I'm going to have to post mine right now. So it looks like I had the idea first. So I beat her to the punch, but she's going to have her own flair, probably a better song choice than I have. She'll spend time, pick out the right right song. She watches TikTok videos, so she knows the trending stuff going on. <laughs> the and, only uh, thing trending on mine is the Johnny Depp trials. I need to get off my phone, honestly. Such a waste of time. <laughs> so, so she's got the better TikTok going on right now for sure. But, uh, you know, when, when she reaches certain milestones, she'll get stuff out on her on her channel as well. So it is Degenerate Fish Keeper is having a packable contest. When does that end or is it already end? If anybody knows. Is having a bowl jar aquascape contest. That's so cool. Yeah. There, there was also the macro bowl contest. So that would have been fun to enter. But uh, we miss a lot. Yeah, well, you're busy. You're working. That's why I keep telling you. You need. I told her she needs to put her, her two weeks notice in. And it's not her two weeks notice to quit. It's her two weeks notice that she's only working four days a week. So whether that means she's got to step down or they just have to give your store more hours, 
for more associates, but I, I just think that we, we'd be better off if you were here breeding fish, plants, the isopods. We might be able to do the turtles and again June next year. Four. Welcome back, Crypt Keeper. Oh, nobody reminded me, man. Remind you what? The thing for Crypt Keeper. So, Crypt Keeper, sorry. But there's no no reason to go and rewatch everything. Big Dog asks, Orange Eyed Tiger with Red and Black Tiger, what will come out? Uh, you get normal tigers. It's just like a mix of like red, purple, blue uh, striped bodies. Uh, nothing, nothing really uh, impressive. You can cross the orange eyed back with the, the F ones to get, you know, the orange eyed, uh, red tiger, blue bodies and stuff like that. But uh, just some mutt tigers. Nothing, nothing really uh, interesting. And Ruben said to put my notice in. <laughs> but the the bowl contest ends June fourth, so we've we've got plenty. I messaged you who it was. Plenty so. of time. We'll remember that now. Hopefully that. June 4th is coming up really fast, though, honestly. It's already the 23rd. Yeah, and, and, and Matt's on board. And, and it's not so much that she needs to quit. It's just definitely stepping down because there's, there's a lot of things around the house where not cleaning or anything like that. It's just like <laughs> today we, we got our not not our resale license, our Florida resale license, and we want to start carrying in some shrimp foods starting with the shrimp envy brand and uh you know there's a couple other things here and there that we want to you know buy in and uh bring into the shrimp hobby that isn't readily available in our areas and stuff like that so having the resale license is one way we can help shelby you know step aside and focus on some products and, and some other stuff like that and, and there's so much other things like we could be growing our own leaves and stuff like that, our own botanicals, but it's just so much time in the day, especially when she works from eight o'clock in the morning till four o'clock in the afternoon. It's not a nine to five, it's an eight to four, but same hours. <laughs> um, sorry, gotta bring this up. Uh, I just sat on the cat toy. <laughs> Stop making noise. Are you sure you didn't sit on the cat? <laughs> the cat toy. Oh, man. What kind of cat toy do you have? Uh, it's, it's actually the mouse thing. <laughs> oh, that'd be so funny. And then... He, you know, Matt said he kind of just said she's slacking around the house. No, no, no. Yeah, I know. You know, editing a full video, getting our resale license, doing two clips for our live stream, getting the live stream ready, the cover for the live stream in the past day, and doing like three loads of laundry. I would hope that I'm not slacking, that I'm just can't physically do enough when um, I only have so much time at home. <laughs> and I uh, can't wait to see you either in Dallas and excited can't wait for the next shrimp show i can't wait to do a uh second tour video of the shrimp pimp's house because you set up that gnarly new rack and i'm quite excited to see it and we're gonna bring home some lapis i've got a tank in mind that i'm gonna leave open just for those shrimps so i want to leave him alone if you don't have any to spare <laughs> he wants those <laughs> and i think you got something else i want to get my hands on too there was something. Can the orange eyed get to the red tiger? Yeah. Yeah, you, you just got to cross back uh, a generation mm -hmm. or two. So anything that doesn't have any orange eyed gene cross with orange eyed gene will not make any orange eyed babies. Both parents have to have the orange eyed gene present. So after you cross them with one another, cross back with the orange eyed to get the most orange eyed babies. Have a good night, Frank. Thanks for joining us, man. He has a lot now and red lapis. So I think I have the red lapis. I believe we have some of those. So 
Uh, it's the the blue ones, the shadow pandas, the black and blue that I really want. So final minute of the stream. Uh, I just want to remind everybody, uh, Wednesday nights, we are also on at 10 p.m. Eastern time. I'm not quite sure what the plan is yet. Uh, Chance is traveling right now to Kentucky for a dog show with his girlfriend. He says he's going to have his laptop with him and internet in the hotel. So hopefully we can make that happen. I'm not sure if it's going to be the second episode of Half Scaped or if it's just going to be us just, uh, you know, chatting. Talk. Yeah. I, it's really <laughs> no one wants to, to come out your mouth and you're trying so hard to not say it. Yeah, I think uh, we made sailors it a whole, down here, a by whole, the whole two hours without using a curse word. So yes. I can't believe it. It is actually it. a good stretch for us. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, when, when our kids are around, oh, I'm so sorry for cursing in front of your kids. I'm like, they hear it a lot worse. And if they actually heard you, they would tell you not to say that word. Like our kids are the best enforcers of that. And I was still on horrible. And, and we are not sailors. I am a sailor. You get seasick. We need to work on that. <laughs> Got to work on getting your sea legs well, still. But uh, when I'm angry, <laughs> you're right. You're right. I want to say thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you to our new members, Jeffrey Brown and Ed Chattanooga Ed. Thank you. Were those the only two? We had DJ Owen and Dr. <laughs> Anthony donate to the chat. So thank you guys so much. For everybody who has rewatched or just made it through this far to the channel, we appreciate you guys yeah, so much. The support and everything like that is what motivates us and drives us to get through the next week, to get so much done so we can bring that to you guys, share it all with you. Uh, we don't have time to do updated vlogs every day so these live streams are kind of our way to keep you guys all informed up to date and uh you know updated intact <laughs> man there was something up uh, uh, you were going wanted, you there was a word it. i wanted to say with you were that, going down that road and uh, just you stir steered right <laughs> yeah so you're in the lake now yeah thanks guys <laughs> Staying with me. I'm going to lose it eventually. I guess two hours and one minute is my time. So, <laughs> Thank you, everyone. We, uh, we're watching and we appreciate it so much. Have a good night.